wait to see what you do. And you didn't disappoint. You let five people die. Then you let Dent take your place. Even to a guy like me. I love how Heath Ledger's performance of the Joker is so full of mannerisms. He really uses his entire face, licks his lips, pulls his mouth into a smile, wrinkles his forehead. And I haven't done many creepy roles, so I wanted to challenge myself to do this one. <laughs> I wanted to see what you do, and you didn't disappoint. You let five people die. Then, you let Dent take your place. Even to a guy like me, that's cold. And those mob fools want you gone so they can get back to the way things were. But I know the truth. There's no going back. You've changed things forever. Then why do you want to kill me? <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to kill you. What would I do without you? Go back to ripping off mob dealers? No. 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 You. You complete me. You're garbage. Who kills for money? Don't talk like one of them. You're not. Even if you liked me. To them, you're a freak. Like me. They need you right now, but when they don't, they'll cast you out like a leper. See, their morals, their code, it's a bad joke. Dropped at the first sign of trouble. They're only as good as the world allows them to be. I'll show you. When the chips are down, these, uh, these civilized people, they'll eat each other. See, I'm not a monster. I'm just ahead of the curve. Lucy, I'm home. Nicole Kidman is fearless in her performances. When she commits, she commits 100%. She's also a master at conveying a large breadth of emotions through a single gesture, dramatic in a minimalistic sense. It's all over. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. I thought they were gonna boo. You wanna do a show? Have you been cheating on me? What? Have you been cheating on me? Is this a bit? No. No, I haven't been. When you stay out all night, you're on the boat playing cards. You haven't been with anybody else. Don't gaslight me. They got it right, didn't they? They only got the picture wrong. Did they get it right? Did they get it exactly right? Just tell me. Tell me why you think I've cheated on you. That is your lipstick, remember? You kissed me at the beginning of the week and then took my handkerchief and wiped the lipstick off and put it back in my pocket. And you said you'd never done that before. I hadn't. Then what the hell are we talking about? This is my lipstick. They were just call girls. It doesn't mean anything, Lucy. Mm. Let's just do the show, yeah? Let's just forget about this for a half hour, yeah? Jim, it's not gonna get better than this. Let's do a show! You had a career, Dad, before the third comic book movie. Before people started to forget who was inside that bird costume. This scene in Birdman had my full attention, this simple two minute scene. I remember neglecting to blink because I was so invested in the way that her eyes moved and how her hatred manifested. I would love to deliver a performance that's even a fraction as good.
This is my chance to finally do some work that actually means something. That means something to who? You had a career, Dad, before the third comic book movie. Before people started to forget who was inside that bird costume. You were doing a play based on a book that was written 60 years ago for a thousand rich old white people whose only real concern is going to be where they go to have their cake and coffee when it's over. Nobody gives a shit but you. And let's face it, Dad, you are not doing this for the sake of art. You are doing this because you want to feel relevant again. Well, guess what? There is an entire world of people out there who fight to be relevant every single day, and you act like it doesn't exist. Things are happening in a place that you ignore, a place that, by the way, has already forgotten about you. I mean, who the fuck are you? You hate bloggers. You mock Twitter. You don't even have a Facebook page. You're the one that doesn't exist. You're doing this because you're scared to death, like the rest of us, that you don't matter. And you know what? You're right. You don't. It's not important, okay? You're not important. Get used to it. You know, I hear the camera adds 10 pounds. Looks like you've eaten five cameras. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. We chose this piece because of Zach and Steve's incredible senses of comedy. They've mastered the art of satiric humor, which we found challenging to properly recreate. We had a great time making this project and hope that we did justice to their minute mannerisms and impeccable comedic timing. Hello, welcome to another edition of Between Two Ferns. I'm your host, Zach Galifianakis, and I'm very pleased to have one of my favorite uh, actors, Steve Carell. It's a pleasure to meet you. You know, I hear they say the camera adds 10 pounds. Looks like you've eaten five cameras. Here we go. Here we go. I really love The Office, and I think that you And you loved Ricky Gervais. I've seen your show. I know what you do. Oh, I meant the good one. I didn't mean yours, right? Oh, I meant the good show. And scene. All right, listen, Steve. I'm not going to do the insults like I usually do. I'm, I'm not going to say that your character in Despicable Me, I heard that they were going to base the nose of the character off okay. of your nose, but decided to go for something less cartoonish. I'm not going to say that. Let's just do a straight interview. Straight interview. Yeah, OK, that sounds great. What's the thing you're most proud of? Oh, Evan Almighty, of course. That's a great movie. That's a good movie. Fuck you. Steve, Why don't you I just leave me right into that one and smack me across the face? That's a great movie! Okay. Regardless of all that, like it lost a lot of money and all that stuff, and that the budget was way over, and no one saw it, and no one was interested in seeing it, it's a great movie. I have some things that I brought that I want to say to you. Um, G-Force, more like G, he's fat. The only French word you know is buffet. That's not true. I know the word uh, croissant. I heard your last name used to be even longer until you ate the other letters of the alphabet. Zach, you look like a homeless guy that went to a soup kitchen that specializes in ice cream soup. What are you doing? I don't know. I don't know if we should air this one. I'm sorry. You know, to be sorry. honest with you, man. I just struggle with, with the weight thing. It's tough in Hollywood, man. They either want you to lose a bunch of weight or stay at your weight. Now right. that I've got a bit of career going, I just want me to stay at my weight. And, but it could be unhealthy. I don't know, man. It's just you seem so lucky. No one ever makes fun of the great Steve Carell. Everyone that's, just loves that, you. That's not true. There's plenty of things to make fun of. Like what? Um, I'm Italian. You can make fun of that. Is Carell not your last name? Not originally. What is it? Pinocchio? Okay. Okay. Like when you go to the beach and someone yells, shark, shark, and then they just realize it's Steve Carell doing the backstroke. When you go to the beach and swim up past the buoys, do people think there's an island there? I'm not that fat, man. You are pretty no, fat. No, I'm not that fat. You are pretty fat. No, I'm not that fat. You're fat. If you were to do like my percentage of body fat versus your percentage of how much your nose weighs, I guarantee your nose 
per capita weighs more than what I would. All right, fuck you, fat. The point is, I'm not that fat. Okay. I'm not okay. that fat. Okay. I'm not that fat. I see. You think this has nothing to do with you. I chose to study Meryl Streep because of her versatility and talent. She is one of, if not the most, iconic actress of her generation. One of her main motivations as she played Miranda Priestly in The Devil Wears Prada was to reveal the real woman behind the businesswoman. This is somewhat indicative of Streep's acting style. She is able to apply depth, introspection, and humanity to each and every character that she plays. This stuff? Oh, okay, I see. You think this has nothing to do with you. You go to your closet and you select, I don't know, that lumpy blue sweater, for instance, because you're trying to tell the world that you take yourself too seriously to care about what you put on your back. But what you don't know is that sweater is not just blue. It's not turquoise. It's not lapis. It's actually cerulean. And you're also blithely unaware of the fact that in 2002, Oscar de la Renta did a collection of cerulean gowns. And then I think it was Yves Saint Laurent, wasn't it, who showed cerulean military jackets? I think we need a jacket here. And cerulean quickly showed up in the collections of eight different designers. And then it uh, filtered down through the department stores and then trickled on down into some tragic casual corner where you no doubt fished it out of some clearance bin. However, that blue represents millions of dollars and countless jobs, and it's sort of comical how you think you've made a choice that exempts you from the fashion industry when in fact you're wearing the sweater that was selected for you by the people in this room from a pile of stuff. Do you want to know about the best day of my life? Cubs. I'd, um, I'd pissed myself by accident. Then I'd have sitting down for ages and then um, I was trying to, trying to get out, like to leave the room, but this little kid kept blocking me. Joe Dempsey makes it feel like the stuff he's going through is completely real. He's able to ground the character in a way that I can find myself relating to, despite the fact that I've gone through a few things that his character has gone through. Hey, do you, um, do you want to hear about the best day of my life? Cubs. I'd, um, I, I'd piss myself by accident. I was sitting around for ages and, um, I was trying to, I was trying to get out, like, to leave the room. But this little kid kept stopping me, blocked me leaving. It's like he was playing a game or something. And so I told him, all right, he was a dickhead, and that he's going to get out of my way, right, dickhead. And then the whole place went quiet because I'd said dickhead. And then they was all laughing, every one of them. And I couldn't figure out if it was, you know, because I'd swore that they'd seen that, like, my shorts are wet. So I tried to, I tried to cover my shorts with my hands, but then they all definitely noticed. And then there was even more laughing. We had Peter, my brother, he was, um, he was the youngest ever sixer or something. They're the ones in charge, sixers. Dip, dip, dip. Yeah. He could do all the knots, him. He made out of practice. He loved it. Well, he stands up. Yeah, sixer. And well, so I liked him. And well, he took my hand and took me to the toilet. And yeah, well, he'd take my shorts off and then he'd clean me up. And then he'd take off his shorts and then he'd put them on me. And then he kissed me on the cheek. And then we walked out of the toilet and I was in his pants and no one laughed. It was the best day of my life. Look, um, don't, don't tell the others about this, all right? <laughs> April! The inability! The inability! Oh, oh, Frank, you really are a wonderful talker. If black could be made into white by talking, you'd be the man for the job! I chose to do a monologue by Kate Winslet because I admire how she doesn't hold back in her acting. 
All her performances I've seen have been emotionally driven, and she has great control over her body language. Do you know what the definition of insanity is? No, do you? Yes, it's the inability to relate to another human being. It's the inability to love. <laughs> at a party once and now I loathe the sight of you. In fact, if you touch me or anything, if you come closer, I think I'll scream. Ah! Well, whatever you do, however terrible, however hurtful, it all makes sense, doesn't it? In your head, you never meet anybody who thinks they're a bad person. In this scene, Tom is just going through so much, so many conflicting emotions, and Matt Damon did a really beautiful job of tackling all that and portraying that just through his eyes and his body language and the way he talks, and I really wanted to try and tackle that. Well, whatever you do, however terrible, however hurtful, it all makes sense, doesn't it? In your head, you never meet anybody who thinks they're a bad person. <laughs> Don't you just take the past and put it in a room in the basement and lock the door and never go in there? <laughs> That's what I do. And then you meet someone special. And all you want to do is toss them the key and say, Open up, step inside, but you can't because it's dark and there are demons. If anybody saw how ugly it is, I keep wanting to do that. Just fling open the door and let the light in. Clean everything out. Who is it? Uh, not today, Rue. Sorry. Come on, man. Don't be a dick. Nah, I'm serious. Can't come in. Uh, look, man. All I all I need is just like a few OCs. I chose this piece not only because it challenged me, but because I wanted to experience even a fraction of the dedication Zendaya attributed to this role. She is insanely talented. Not today, Rue. Sorry. <laughs> Come on, man, don't be a dick. All I need mean, is just like. A few OCs. I'm sorry. I can't help you. Fez? Fez! Fuck! Open the fucking door, please! Fez, I'm begging you, open the door! Fez! You're full of shit, man! You know you make your living off of selling drugs to teenagers? And now all of a sudden you want to have a fucking moral high ground? You're a fucking dropout drug dealer, alright? You're a fucking dropout drug dealer with seven functioning fucking brain cells! Open the door!
at all. I had a stereo that was very decent, a wardrobe that was getting very respectable. I was close to being complete. Shit, man, now it's all gone. It's all gone. <sighs> all gone. I chose Brad Pitt because he's a very versatile actor with some of my favorite performances of all time through all genres of film. I appreciate how he can play many roles with the same character tropes, but make each one as unique and exciting as the last. You know, it could be worse. A woman could cut off your penis while you're sleeping and toss it out the window of a moving car. I mean, there's always that. I don't know, it's just, when you buy furniture, you tell yourself, that's it, that's the last sofa I'm gonna need. Whatever else happens, I've got that sofa problem handled. I had it all. I had a stereo that was very decent, a wardrobe that was getting very respectable. I was close to being complete. Shit, man, now it's all gone. All gone. All gone. Do you know what a duvet is? It's, um, it's a comforter. A blanket. It's just a blanket. Tell me, why do guys like you and I know what a duvet is? Is this essential to our survival in the hunter-gatherer sense of the word? No. What are we then? We're, um, I don't know, consumers? Right. We are consumers. We are byproducts of a lifestyle obsession. Murder, crime, poverty, these things don't concern me. What concerns me are celebrity magazines, television with 500 channels, some guy's name on my underwear, Rogaine, Viagra, Olestra. Martha Stewart. Fuck Martha Stewart. Martha's polishing the brass on the Titanic, it's all going down, man. So fuck off with your sofa units and string green stripe patterns. I say, Never be complete. I say stop being perfect. I say let's evolve. Let the chips fall where they may. But that's me, and I could be wrong. Maybe it's a terrible tragedy. Nah, it's just stuff. It's not a tragedy. Well, you did lose a lot of versatile solutions to modern living. You're right. No, I don't smoke. You know, my insurance is probably gonna cover it anyway, so. What? The things you own end up owning you. Welcome to Eyewitness News at Six with Susan Ortega. Evan Baxter, Fred Donahue, Sports, Dallas Coleman, Weather, and now, Buffalo's number one news team. Good evening and welcome to Eyewitness News at 6. I'm Susan Ortega. And I'm Evan Baxter, and here's what's making news. A potential scandal with the Buffalo PD surfaced today when the mayor... <coughs> Steve Carell just goes for it. He commits to every character he plays and delivers with excellent timing. His mantra is, I think every character in a comedy shouldn't know they're in a comedy. And just like Steve, I aspire to play characters in the same way. And I'm Evan Baxter, and here's what's making news. A potential scandal with the Buffalo PD surfaced today when the mayor... Somebody get him some water, please. Yeah, it looks like my new co-anchor may need a glass of water. <laughs> In other news, the Prime Minister of Sweden went to Washington today, and my tiny little nipples went to France. What did he just say? Check the prompter. The White House Reception Committee greeted the Prime Rib Roast Minister, and I do the cha-cha like a sissy girl. <laughs> I like a do the cha-cha. I'm sorry, we seem to be having some uh, technical difficulties. In other news... Uh, my apologies. Bah! 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 Bah
I chose Kate Winslet for my BTC mentor project because she is incredible. Her fervor for acting is contagious, and I knew that by taking on one of her roles for this project, I would feel her passion in my own work. When I watched Titanic for the first time, I fell in love with Winslet, Rose, and her story. I want to make my audience feel the same way that Kate Winslet makes me feel when I watch her in film. This was a really close call. You know, I never thought I'd say this, literally never, but I think you were absolutely right about us. Very square peg, very round hole. You cannot mean that. The great thing is I actually do. And I'm about three years late in telling you this, but nevertheless, I need to say it. Jasper, where? I need the lights on. Jasper, you have never treated me right, ever. You broke my heart. You acted like somehow it was my fault, my misunderstanding, and I was too in love with you to ever be mad at you. So I just punished myself for years. But you wassing in here on my lovely Christmas holiday and telling me that you don't want to lose me whilst you're about to get married, somehow newly entitles me to say, it's over. This, this, this twisted, toxic thing between us, it's finally finished. I'm miraculously done being in love with you. <sighs> it's not simple to say that most days I don't recognize these issues say Jessie Mueller invokes so much emotion in me whenever I watch her. She commits fully to her character and brings me to tears. When I saw this video of her performing, I was so moved by her performance that I could think of no better person to emulate. No. 
could I ask for? Sometimes the light just slips in through a back door and carves out a person and makes you believe it's all true. And now I got you. If I'm honest, I know I would give 